Now that we have WooCommerce installed and set up, we're going to start going through the configuration options of WooCommerce. In order to get to the initial settings, just hover over uh, the WooCommerce menu. So you'll see you have two new menus here. One is WooCommerce, which uh, controls the store, and then the other one is Products, which controls the actual WooCommerce products that you're selling. If you hover over WooCommerce and click on Settings, it'll bring up all the Settings tabs. Uh, so you can see we have, we have uh, General, uh, which is your general store settings, products, which has product related settings, tax, shipping, checkout, which is payment, uh, accounts, emails, and the API. So in this tutorial, we are going to be covering uh, general products, uh, accounts, yeah, general products and accounts, and we'll cover tax, shipping, and checkout in, in later videos. Uh, emails is a little bit more complex. Uh, that involves editing template files, uh, so uh, we'll show you how to do that a little bit later. And the API, you can pretty much ignore for the moment because that is for uh, more for developers. So under, under this uh, general tab, this is going to set up kind of the same, some of the same information that we did during setup. You can change your base location. Uh, this is the selling location. So these are countries that you're going to be selling to. Now, if you're selling to everybody internationally, you can just leave this how it is, uh, but uh, that's not realistic for everybody. So if you're selling, if you're mainly, your target market is mainly local, uh, whether it be city or, or by country, um, then you can put those in. And there's two ways to do it. You can sell to everybody. You can sell to specific countries. So only countries that you list here will be able to purchase from you. Other people will get a message saying that it's not available in their country. Or you can sell to everybody but certain countries. You can exclude certain countries. Uh, so whichever way is, way is easier for you. And it's the same thing with the shipping locations. Uh, so if you can sell to people, but there's only certain places that you'll ship to, that's the, the situation, uh, the, the setting that you would use. Um, the default customer location, it's best to leave this on geolocate because that's going to try to determine, the system's going to try to determine where your user is from, um, or you, there's a couple other options here about how to get that information, but geolocate is best. Uh, if you're going to be using the tax system in WooCommerce, uh, then you leave this box checked for enable taxes and tax calculations. Um, if you're not going to be using any kind of tax or if you're just going to be entering in your prices with tax included so you don't need the system to track taxes or anything like that, uh, then you would uncheck this box. Uh, the store notice, if you have a certain message, whether it be uh, we're going to be down for maintenance starting at this time or this product is on sale or <clears throat> excuse me, or what have you, uh, you can check this box, enter in this, and it's going to put a bar at the top of the screen or at the top of the store pages that will let your users know anything that you need to tell them. And then there's the currency options, and these are the same as uh, during, during the setup. So now we'll go into the products tab. I'll just get rid of these messages for later. Uh, we'll go to the products tab and this has general display inventory and download, downloadable products. So the weight and dimensions unit we've already covered and then there's our review settings. So WooCommerce has a review system built into it uh, which will show up under on your product page. So there'll be your product information and below that there's going to be a couple tabs and this is for additional information on your product or reviews if you have them enabled. Uh, and uh, there's a couple settings here. First is to enable the review system in general. Uh, the second is to show a little tag on the reviews from people who have actually purchased that product from your site. Uh, this third option is reviews can only be left by verified owners, which means the only people that can review the product on your website is somebody that has purchased that product directly from your website. And I'd probably recommend if you're going to have reviews enabled, I would recommend that you have that just because it prevents any kind of mischief or spam or anything else like that that people might want to do or even or even competitors, you never know. Uh, the point is, is that you want to make sure that the people reviewing your product are actually people who have purchased your product so you can get honest and fair reviews from everybody. Uh, the product ratings, you can enable star rating. So in addition to leaving a comment, they can leave a, a, a star rating. And uh, the second box determines whether or not if you have star ratings available, whether they're required or, or optional. So um, if this is unchecked, they're optional. If it's checked, they're required. So in order to leave a review, they have to also put in a, a star rating. Under the display menu or sub menu, uh, we have a couple different things. Uh, these top parts, or this, sorry, this first setting, the shop page, 
um, you should generally leave this alone and that dictates which page should act as your shop page but WooCommerce already installed um, a shop page for us and to make things simpler for us and to not overcomplicate things we want to keep that as the shop page whenever possible but if you did need to create a specifically named page for the shop this is where you would then select what new page should be treated as the WooCommerce page uh, the shop page displays you can choose whether or not that that main shop page will display products categories or both and this is going to really depend on personal preference and also how many products you actually are selling on your website um, so you know what's what's best for people to get, be able to get directly to what they want so if you have two products you're probably going to want to just show the products on the shop page if you have 50 products and 10 categories then you might want to do categories or, or a combination of both and then there's the default sorting and the add to cart behavior so uh, Oh, you know, keep this enable Ajax add to cart button. Just keep that on because that gives people kind of a smooth animation and transition. Now, this first option redirect to the cart page after successful addition. So it, it, this kind of depends on why people are going to be at your store. Uh, if you expect most people or everybody that's coming to your store is going to buy one product and then directly check out. Uh, then then this option might be for you because what this is going to do is as they're browsing your store, if they click add to cart it's going to immediately redirect them to their checkout or to their to their cart page so they can kind of review their order and then you know lead them on into checkout if you're expecting people are going to browse through your shop and buy multiple products then leave this unchecked because we don't want to interrupt their browsing experience to bring them to the cart every time so that just depends on how many products you have and what you expect your 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 standard user to be doing on your store uh, this next section is product images and we're going to leave this alone for now uh, we'll discuss more about that on the front end part but this dictates how large the images are on the different shop pages what the the predefined uh, sizes are but we'll get into more of that in the design phase so you don't have to worry about that for now and then we're going to take a look at inventory so this is if you are selling physical products and you want to be able to track inventory you want to uh, utilize WooCommerce in order to track your inventory and automatically display items that are out of stock etc uh, then you'll want to keep this checkbox checked if you're not worried about inventory or you have another system uh, at home uh, or, or at your office that you're going to use to track inventory you can uncheck this but um, check this to enable all the inventory options across the site uh, and then there's a couple options that have to do with that so hold stock the timer and uh, notifications to the, to the email address that's here on you know when you should be notified whether it should be at a low stock in which case it'll email you when the item count is this number and then out of, or out of stock which when just when that hits zero or whenever this out of stock threshold uh, number is it'll email this email address and say hey uh, you're running out of items here <clears throat> And then the out of stock visibility, which is what should happen when that inventory amount is zero. Should we continue to display that product on the page uh, or we, should we just hide it? Now, if you just hide it, it'll just disappear. If you keep it on the page, there's a couple options. One, it'll just say out of stock and it won't allow people to buy. And two, you can allow people to back order. But we actually we, did, we set up that setting in the product itself because it might be different. For each product so that's not a global setting so for right now we're just deciding whether or not we want to have it on the page or if we want to hide it when it's out of stock um, and then the stock display format so if you want people to see uh, how many items are in stock you, you, you'll click this always show or you can remove it if you just want stock as more of a back-end thing and you don't want anything to display unless it's out of stock and then we have some options if you're selling digital products so this is when people purchase and they're going to expect to download a file afterwards um, we have a file download method but unless somebody tells you to so whether you're having questions in the forums and somebody tells you to change this option or woocommerce support tells you to change this option generally just keep it on forced downloads and then this access restriction whether or not people should be uh, have to log in so they're going to get a url to download their file but should they have to be logged in to get that file or should anybody following that link be able to get to it uh, and then this grant access to downloads products after payment this kind of determined is uh, is based on if you're going to have payment methods that are offline or uh, not immediate so if you're selling products through PayPal or Stripe or some other payment processor where you expect to get paid immediately 
uh, then that's no problem. They pay and they get access to the file. However, if you're going to be accepting payment methods such as bank transfers or uh, checks or some other kind of payment that, that you would have to, once you receive that information or that payment, you would then have to go into the order manually and select completed. Uh, and until then, it's going to have a status of processing while you're waiting. So basically this means is do you want to give them access to that file while you're waiting for the money or do you want to give them access to it after you have manually gone in and selected completed? So this is only for people that are going to be accepting things, payments through bank transfer or checks. So if this is checked, then uh, as soon as it hits processing, as soon as they've gone through the, the payment process, they're going to have access to that file. If you uncheck it, then it'll wait until you've gone in and uh, clicked completed. And the last is going to be the last uh, section for this video is going to be accounts. And this has to do with uh, user accounts and pages and how that kind of works. Um, the My Account page, this is similar to our shop page. We generally want to leave this the same, but if you did need to create a new page for it, this is where you'd select your new page. Uh, and then we have some customer registration options, uh, whether you want to allow people to register on if when they reach either of these two pages, if we want a registration form. Um, a login page uh, or a login form uh, on the checkout page so that people can easily log in when they're checking out if they already have an account. Uh, and account creation, um, you can either, if this first box is checked, it's going to generate a username for them based on their email address. And you can also select whether or not the system will create a password for them. Uh, and this last section controls the slugs of your URLs. And again, it's best to leave these the same, but if you did need to change the slugs, and remember that slugs are the actual word in the URL. Um, so this, you know, this, for example, this WP-admin, that is the slug uh, for the WordPress administration dashboard. Uh, so these are the different, basically these are the URL structures of the words that would be used in the URL. Uh, but again, let's, let's keep those the same unless we really have a good reason to change them. Uh, so that's it for this section. Those are just the general kind of store settings. Uh, and uh, in the next couple of videos, we'll go over some of the more complex stuff like taxes, uh, shipping, and payment. And then lastly, we will go over the different product types that you can create with WooCommerce, depending on what you need to sell. And that is both physical products, and we will also show you digital products.